So you said that you got injured at the end of last season, obviously missed out on the Prem Rugby final, and with the World Cup blooming, how had, had that feel? Yeah, it was, it was tough. I think probably the toughest period I've had to go through in my career. Um, with, yeah, with those things there, yeah, missing the Prem was tough, and I kind of thought, okay, well, if I miss that, I can be back in time for the World Cup, and then a few complications with the injuries, um, yeah, stopped that being able to happen. But I feel like I'm, I'm better for it now. Like, look, the World Cup's over, and... I'm back playing and I feel feel good for it. So yeah, I, I think it's, it's taught me kind of a bit of resilience, a little bit of how much I appreciate doing what I do. I love that. And you're still young as well, so you've still yeah. got a lot of other opportunities to play in the World Cup. Yeah, hopefully. That's hopefully. It, mate. Fingers, fingers keep, crossed. Keep going, keep going. That's a, that's I've also got you. to ask you another question. Yeah, so why, why did you pick to represent Scotland instead yeah. of England? So I played for Scotland uh, under 16s before I'd ever represented England at all. Um, my mum had kind of always, she's always said, always will say, uh, she always wanted me to play for Scotland and kind of had always pushed that. Um, as a kid growing up, like I wasn't, I, I always just kind of genuinely was always like, I just want to be a really good rugby player. Yeah. And, you know, wh wherever that, that led to, to me going was what it was. And then I think as I've grown up, I've got more and more, you know, my family want me to do it, I want to do it. Like I looked at Scotland, Scotland's getting better and better and better. And it, it, it was just a, a country and a team I, I felt like I identified myself with. Um, and then the call came from Gregor and yeah, couldn't, couldn't turn that down at all. What, what did it feel like to represent Scotland for the first yeah. time then? It was, that was one of the best moments of my life, to be honest. Um, even though we lost, it was against France, but it was unbelievable. I, I got the call the, the day before, like I was in the squad and Got a call the day before Hamish Watson had got COVID. Um, so we were about to go to the captain's run and I was like traveling reserve. And Gregor just rang me, I was like, look, Hamish is out, so you're gonna be on the bench. And it was kind of 24 hours before the game. I'm trying to ring up all my family and tell them like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm in the squad yeah. and you need to go up to Edinburgh. None of them answered the phone. <laughs> which was which is hell. I'm like I'm like full of energy. Like I wanna. It's like a massive day for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. None of them answered the phone. They actually they all ended up coming. So my my older brother, mum and dad, um, they managed to come, and it was it was incredible. There's there's a moment where we're singing the national anthem, and I'm looking around the crowd, and I, I like catch eyes with with my brother and dad, and that was like the best single best feeling of my life. Like if I could pocket one moment, it, it'd be that because. It's kind of everything hits you, all the sacrifice you've made, all the kind of, you know, times mum's driven me to like club rugby on a Sunday when I'm 10 years old, kind of all comes flooding back and it like reminds you what you do it for. So yeah, it was a great day, great memory and, and something that I'll always cherish. Amazing. You know what, at 24 years old, so far in this conversation, you seem like such an experienced rugby player, with <laughs> such like a vast, yeah. like a vast like variety of experiences as well. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll take, take my mum always wanted me to play for Scotland as well. She's very really? Scottish, but unfortunately, I could just get to Jamaica and Kaya. So. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland's at Scotland's at the question, mum. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. that's how we met. <laughs> so, yeah, is it? Yeah. Oh, Jamaica's vibes though. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Luxembourg. Hey, come on, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, <man>. country <laughs> that is Luxembourg. No, that's vibey though. That's that's different. Yeah, well, we've got big goals, haven't we? So we'll see what happens in the next okay, few okay, years. Okay, okay, okay. Well, what's your what's your food like when you're with the Jamaica squad? Oh, it was, pie, it was pie and chips, <laughs> wasn't it in Luxembourg? Really, to make bangers and mash. <laughs> yeah, you need to you need to get the culture flowing. Yeah, yeah. you need I've, to start driving that. Well, I've I've not actually played for Jamaica in Jamaica, so I guess if you play a, if you play away, then you never know. Yeah, it might be some yeah. jerk chicken, naki, and salt fish. That's and it. What's what's your heritage? In? I'm half Nigerian. Oh, mate, would you never like represent Nigeria if they had like an up and coming team once you've retired? Yeah, like, oh, no, I'd, I'd love to. If that was a possibility, then then yeah, if, if there was a way to get kind of Nigeria rugby off the ground, then then sure, I'd, I'd love to be. Put involved. yourself in the shop window now. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like to think I might be in the shop window regardless, but. Man, head coach. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll have to fight Mara for that. Mara might be a bit more qualified than I am, but. There's well, a lot, give, there's give a lot of good, years. a lot of good Nigerian rugby players actually. Yeah. A lot of good ones in in the Prem, but you know, unfortunately, the facilities aren't there quite yet. Maybe one day. You never know. It just takes one person, doesn't it? To have yeah. faith in it, <laughs> yeah. like you. Yeah, trying to push <laughs> it. Hey, we'll see. Life after rugby, or we'll see. We'll see what's calling.